Go ahead. The next talk is uh, Packaging for Beginners by, by Gregory Nagy. All right. So this talk will be uh, about packaging in a much different style than most would uh, expect. So first of all, uh, who among you have uh, read the new maintainer's guide or the packaging guide or any of that stuff? How many of you enjoyed it? <laughs> all right. Well, that's because they are very dry and uh, to make this talk better and useful, I will ignore everything that is written in there. <laughs> I advise you do the same because they are very useful once you know uh, what you are doing. But when you're uh, trying your first steps, they are an awful, boring piece of something. So we will do something very different today. Uh, another question. How many of you read the policy? from beginning to end. <laughs> okay, congratulations, one, one person. How many, how many of you tried to read the policy? How many of you got bored after the first five minutes? Yes, because the policy is not meant to be re read from beginning to end. You look at it trying to find things when Lin Tian uh, yells at you. So that's what we will do today. And uh, I have one small announcement to make. Uh, I have bad news. I promised ponies, but it turns out that Ponysay is not free software. At least the data is not. So this talk, uh, we will package something entirely different. But since I promised ponies, here's one I drew uh, today. Uh, doesn't look like a pony, but uh, yeah. Uh, okay, so let's look at what we will be packaging today. It's a little program I wrote, uh, fit for Debian's uh, 20th birthday. The cake is a lie. Apparently it isn't, but well, it's an ASCII art, so it doesn't look like a cake, but if you squint a little, you might notice that it is one. And the resolution is terrible, so we have the text all over the place, but that's OK. We don't mind. It looks better when the resolution is bigger. Trust me on that. Anyway, we will take this piece of software. It's really easy, and we'll package it. It's your standard auto tools based thing written in C has one source file, and that's about it. How do you go about packaging it? Well, the easiest way is to call the big this command and see what it tells you. Well, it's missing a changelog and a Debian directory, so let's make one. There's this handy tool called DCH, which is short for dep change. It is meant to uh, help you write change logs, and we'll use it to create one. We fill it out. You've probably seen a few change logs. It's not rocket science. Oh. Uh, okay. Sorry. Fill it out. We do not have an ITP back to close, so that's about it. Let's see what it says now. Oh, long text, lots of things. What didn't it find? Oh, we need a control file. What is a control file? Well, the control file tells uh, DPKG uh, what sources you have and what binary packages you want to build. So we'll hack up a really easy one. First of all, every control file has to have two uh, sections. The first section uh, describes the source. Uh, it looks a bit like, OK. Sorry, I always forget my editor is uh, a bit dumb. 
Uh, the first section describes the source, which in this case is this. Uh, we also have a couple of other fields we need here, like the maintainer. And what else? We need a section. Mm, let's see. Games will be fine. And the priority, which will be extra. Um, that should be enough for starters. and I need to learn to spell. Uh, the next section is about the binary. Uh, we will build one, one binary package, except it's called package, is with the same name. We give it a description. And uh, the long description starts right after in the next line. Uh, you have to start it with a space uh, because this whole control file looks like an email. Uh, and starting with a space uh, tells the parser that uh, it is a, conti a continuation of what was about. Okay, and that's about it. So we have a very simple control file. Let's see what uh, the tool tells us. Mm, all right, we need an architecture field. Every package in Debian must uh, have an ar uh, architecture associated with it. Uh, It can be either uh, an arch all package, which means uh, the same binary will run on uh, all architectures. Uh, in our case, this is wrong because this is a C program, which is compiled, and uh, it depends on the architecture. So we write any here. Uh, you could list the architectures here if your package is uh, something that only works on a certain subset of uh, architectures. Uh, you can make it uh, Linux specific by writing Linux any, or FreeBSD specific, like writing KFreeBSD any, but this is portable thing, so we'll write any. Going further, oh, now it needs a rules file. We're progressing. The rules file is used uh, to do the hard work, uh, it tells the BKG the rules uh, about how to uh, build a package. In the most simple case, like ours, we'll do with this only. This is magic, black magic. Uh, but the wonderful thing about black magic is you don't need to understand it. If you need to uh, change the way the magic works, you only have to understand little pieces of it. And thankfully, Dep Helper, which uh, DH is a part of, has wonderful documentation, man pages, and so on and so forth. Uh, so I would suggest that if you start packaging something, start with this. And uh, if something goes wrong, go from there. We'll see how things will go wrong. And by the way, uh, Debian rules is a make file. That's why we have this first line here. We also need to make it executable, of course. And let's see what happens. Oh, yeah. Since it's a make file, I have to make it a make file. There we go. While it did things, but it also told us a lot of errors and 
other things. So we need to tell this tool to ignore uh, the JIT directory and a couple of other things. The best way to do that uh, is to set the source format to the one it suggests us right here at the bottom. We can do that by uh, creating a new directory called Debian source and creating a new file in it called uh, format and having the text uh, 3.0 killed in it. Uh, what this format does, you, you don't need to know. At least not right now. It's uh, pretty complicated and it's a similar kind of magic that that helper is. Uh, it just has less documentation. Uh, we also want to tell that helper that uh, we want to use the latest and greatest version of it. Uh, it was complaining about that too at the beginning, but I'm not going to scroll that high up. Which we can do by echoing 9 into a file called Debian Compat. And let's see what happens now. Well, this is a much, much, much improved uh, thing. It compiled and now it is doing things. And it is also asking for my... No, I'm not going to sign it right now. So it did stuff. It also built a Debian package for us, which is great. Uh, but the thing is, there are a lot of things missing from this. For example, we can run Lintian on the changes file and it will tell us all kinds of things. A lot of bad, bad things about the package. Okay, uh, let's see. We're missing the maintainer name, which I'm not going to fix right now. Uh, I'm not going to fix the change log either, because I know better. Uh, it's mis missing a copyright file, which I'm not going to add either because uh, writing a copy uh, copyright file could take an entire session of its own. Uh, I can add the standards version field. Which is as easy as this. The standards version field uh, signals uh, which version of policy this package was made to uh, conform to. Uh, what is worse is that we're missing dependencies. If we look into the package, uh, the Debian uh, package, we will see that there is no depends line. If we try to install this, uh, it may work, and on my computer it will, because I already have all dependencies installed. Uh, but since it's a compiled uh, thing, it, it will at least, uh, at least need uh, libc, and probably a few other things as well. So we do another kind of magic, and add the depends line uh, to the binary section. Now, Here's this line of magic, which looks like shell variables, except they are not. Uh, the way it works is uh, when that helper runs, it will uh, find all the packages that your binaries depend on, at least if they are in C, and uh, fill this variable out uh, with the results. Uh, it's something like uh, LDD improved. Uh, here we see the output of LDD. Uh, as you can see, this, this thing depends on quite a lot of things. Uh, 
ranging from free type to lib uh, X11 to other things. Uh, yes? Uh, okay, one moment. <laughs> Wouldn't you have to go through configure AC to figure all this stuff? Uh, figure out all we this can, stuff? Uh, we can, and we will, uh, just not right now. Uh, we need to figure out the uh, dependencies of the binary. If you go through uh, configure AC, you can figure out the build dependencies, uh, which will be useful too, uh, and I'll get to that in about five minutes. Uh, to figure out the uh, runtime dependencies, you can uh, use this SA libs uh, depends line and uh, it will be figured out automatically most of the time. Uh, to figure out the build dependencies, uh, you have to do that manually. Uh, and as I said, we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, I'm not going to build a package again because that takes a long time. Uh, I will show you another thing, a very useful tool called sbuild. Uh, which works by setting up a clean environment to build your package in. So, uh, the last time I ran dpkg uh, build package, it also built a source package, I believe, or if not, yeah, it did. Okay. So, uh, as build, works after setting up, which is easy and well uh, documented in its uh, manual page and other kinds of documentation. Uh, it sets up a clean uh, environment with only build essential installed. Uh, you can uh, give this tool a Debian source control file. It will grab all the build dependencies, install it in the uh, uh, ch root and try to build a package. It's very great to figure out what your build dependencies are and uh, whether your package will build on the auto builders or whether it will not. Uh, this takes quite a long time because it will have to install all the things. Well, except it won't because uh, we don't have any build dependencies right now. Oh, we do because, never mind, I'll just stop this. I forgot that uh, I built the source earlier. Okay, maybe this time. One moment, I'll fix this in a moment. Let's see. So we should have no build dependencies now. And what's the problem now?
okay, while I uh, fix my environment, uh, we'll skip the next step. Uh, if I had compiled this thing without build dependencies, it would fail in a clean environment. So what we'll do next is go through configure AC and figure out what this thing needs. Well, let's see. Uh, it needs PKG config because uh, that's what provides uh, this macro. It will need, uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce this, uh, libkaka, something. It's like aelib but with colors. And it also needs uh, imlib2. So let's add, the, add, add those to the build depends. And it also needs step helper because we're using that. And since we're using compat level nine, we need step helper uh, version nine or later. Uh, we need uh, this. And this should do. We build the source package again, and I forgot to tell it to not sign it. There we go. Let's see how it works. Right. Now it figured out uh, that it needs uh, quite a bit of packages. Uh, it can also download it from the, uh, the build dependencies from the internet. Uh, I have them downloaded already, that's why it didn't do that. Uh, th then it uh, installs all of them, we'll try to com uh, compile the package and make a binary out of it. And if it all succeeds, it copies the result uh, into the same directory uh, we run the tool from. And uh, if it doesn't work, then it will uh, leave the log file of the whole build in the same directory we ran it from. Uh, sadly, it takes a little while on my laptop because it's kind of old and slow, but we're already at the setting up stage. Meanwhile, uh, do you have any questions so far? Plenty. Uh, the setup we see you running now, that's setting it up in a sandbox or something? Yes. Okay. Uh, S-Build is uh, a tool uh, with which you can set up a CH root, uh, a clean one, and it will do all the magic in there. Uh, it's also useful if you are running, uh, say, stable or testing, but want to build for unstable, uh, because everything that uh, goes into Debian must be built on unstable. Yes? Yeah, hey. Um, do you have any recommendations regarding the build environment? For example, using pbuilder over cowbuilder? How is uh, it just a personal preference? It's just personal preference. Uh, I use this build ever since it was packaged, uh, so that's what I'm uh, that's what I'm familiar with. Uh, but other people are using P Builder or Cow Builder, and I think there are maybe one or two more similar tools. Uh, they all work. They all have different properties. You can choose whichever you like. And it built, and now it's uh, removing all the packages it uh, installed before. And we have a successful build, but Lintian failed. Well, that's kind of expected, because there's a lot of things missing from this thing. And, uh, oh, right, I'm stupid, never mind. Uh, 
So we have uh, Debian package right here, which we built. And uh, let's try installing it. Ooh, there are things in it. And if I run it, it works. It looks a bit silly, but it works. <laughs> and I just remembered that I had this terminal open because I wanted to run it here because it has smaller fonts, and it looks much nicer this way. And... Uh, yeah, that was what I had uh, prepared. Oh, uh, wait. Okay, so if we run Lintian on this thing, it uh, tells us a few more errors and uh, warnings, like uh, this binary doesn't have a man page, uh, it's in section games but contains no games, because games need to go into U uh, USR games, not into USR bin. Uh, we can actually fix that easily, and that will show how to uh, So, we have a package which should be uh, installed into uh, USR games instead of USR bin. Uh, since we build only one binary, uh, we can tell and configure uh, that binaries should go into USR uh, games, not USR bin. Uh, with Dep helper, using this short form, we can do that by overriding the uh, configure step. That works by adding a new target uh, to the De uh, Debian rules make file. We simply call uh, the original tool and pa uh, pass it a prefix user games uh, argument. Uh, this will do all the magic uh, DH auto configure does, uh, which includes adding uh, the uh, hardening flags, adding all kinds of uh, other uh, options. But we will also tell it that we want to change the prefix. Another thing about the DCH tool is uh, it can not only create a changelog file, it can also add uh, new versions uh, into it mm -hmm. by using the minus i option. Now we build the package again. And I stop the build. Uh, oh, shoot. Anyway, if it wasn't scrolling this fast, you could see that uh, the argument we uh, added was actually passed. Anyway, if we look at the... Okay, not going to look at it with Midnight Commander. Uh, there is this other command called dpkg-deb uh, with which you can inspect, extract and uh, reassemble uh, Debian packages. Right now, we use the minus C 
which means uh, contents uh, option to list what's inside it. Well, uh, this worked a little, except we didn't want to uh, pass pre prefix because it puts everything under a, a user games then, including the documentation. We only wanted to do, uh, place the binaries there. So it's not prefix, but uh, bin there, I think. Yeah. Okay, we go through all this again. And this time, instead of uh, looking at the final package, we'll have a look at, uh, at the Debian directory. As you see, there are a couple of new files there, like uh, Debian slash files, or uh, the cakeisali.dephelper.log, which is a log of uh, the dep helper commands uh, that ran, or the substores file. And there is a di directory called cake is a lie. Uh, in this directory is uh, all the things installed which our package will include. If we go through that, we'll uh, see that under USR games is our program. There's the doc uh, documentation, and there are the pictures as well. And there's a Debian directory uh, in all capital letters. Uh, that directory is uh, special. Uh, that contains all the thing, all the uh, metadata uh, data that also go uh, goes into the. Uh, final Debian package. Uh, this is all created by uh, Deb Helper. And uh, if you want to quickly look at what goes into your package, you can look, uh, look under uh, the Debian directory and find the directory with the same name as your binary package and see what's there. What is in there will go in your package. And uh, if we run Lintian on this again, well, it complains about a lot less things, uh, and our program is finally at the correct location. So what I would advise is uh, if you start to package something from scra uh, scratch, start with a very simple rules file that pretty much leaves everything to that helper. And uh, after each iteration, run Lintian, try to correct the problems. And uh, if you need to change something uh, which that helper can't figure out, or <coughs> something it figures out but wrongly, just add an override. You don't have to know all the magic that is behind that helper. Just a few tiny pieces uh, which you need for your package. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much my recommendation. Uh, I found it works fairly well. Uh, most of my packages are built this way. Um, Any questions? Yeah, uh, here in the front. Why does, why does make come into play? Uh, well, uh, I'm not quite sure why make was chosen originally for Debian rules. Uh, some ten, 10 years ago, you only had to have a file. Uh, it didn't have to be a make file, although it was recommended. Uh, but policy was changed to uh, 
to require it being a make file. I'm not quite sure why. It's uh, most likely habit or historical reasons. Uh, does that answer your question? Or uh, <laughs> maybe my question was wrong. Um, uh, what's the difference between deep package, build package, and make? Oh. Yeah, uh, well, the main difference is, uh, is the DPKG build package does a few other things, uh, like uh, generating a changes file for you. It can also build a source package, and uh, it can do a couple of other things. But the main difference is uh, generating the changes file. Uh, the changes file lists, uh, well, we can just have a look at it. No? Uh, the changes file is what you uh, actually upload uh, to, the, uh, to the Debian servers along with the rest. Uh, it lists all the files that belong uh, to this version of the package, uh, including the source, if there is any. And uh, this is something that make can't do. Uh, this is all uh, done by DPKG uh, build package, or well, actually a tool that it calls for you. So uh, we can do something like Debian rules binary, if I were in the right directory, that is. Uh, which will do nothing right now because it's already built. But I can clean and I can run binary and it will do all the things that it did before. Uh, DPKG build package does call this command as well. Uh, the difference is that now I got a dev file and that's it. I don't have a source, uh, source tarball, I don't have the Debian uh, tarball. I don't have the Debian source control file, I don't have the changes file, and I don't have any of them signed either. Uh, the PKG build package does that for you. Any other questions? Uh, another here. I never packaged anything, but I have uh, some code that has the Debian rules mm -hmm. for Ubuntu. Is there any difference? Uh, not much. Could it be a start to learn to package? Yes. Yeah. And if it's a Python package? Well, that's a little bit different. Uh, you will most likely uh, need to adjust the dependencies by hand. I'm not exact. I'm quite sure you can't figure out Python dependencies automatically. Uh, but otherwise, it's very similar, I believe. But if you have uh, Debian rules files from uh, Ubuntu, that's a good start. OK, thanks. Well, uh, if there are no more questions, then uh, I think this was it. Uh, I can be reached at argernon at uh, debian.org or on IRC. Uh, if you have any packaging related questions, feel free to turn to me and uh, I will be happy to answer if I can. If not, I'll try to find the appropriate documentation. <laughs>